Today I'm making a moisturiser to help with my own rosacea using all of these ingredients. Because of what I mentioned in my how I create my formulas video at the end, I'm just going to reiterate this uh, disclaimer. So Revega, that's my company, slash Jenna, that's me, does not make any claims as to their qualifications or the efficacy of the cosmetic formulations which are shown here for entertainment purposes only and not meant to treat or cure any condition. Any information given is researched and given to the best of my knowledge at time of recording and any formulas and recipes are experiments created for the purpose of sharing on YouTube. Revega accepts no responsibility for how you use the information given. I'm self-taught and offer these videos from my years of knowledge and experience in making my own cosmetic products for informational and entertainment purposes only. Remember that if you intend to use these formulations for your own product range, you need to do your own research on the ingredients, your own experiments, your own adjustments and your own tests before using, giving or selling. Always check the legal requirements in your country. If you want a PDF downloadable copy of the formula with percentages and grams, then that will be available on my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash So like I said, we're making a cream to help with rosacea. Rosacea is a reddening and inflammation of the skin, commonly on the face and cheeks and sometimes the nose and chin. It's a long term condition and its rash like symptoms usually come and go. The definitive causes appear to be somewhat of a mystery, however it's said to be made worse by things like sun exposure, stress and certain foods and drinks such as spicy food and caffeine. Um, as I've got older I seem to have gone from perfect skin, which people actually used to comment on, to having a little bit of rosacea on my cheeks. So far I'm quite lucky, it's not awful, but it's enough that I'd rather it wasn't there. Generally I just look a bit flushed and permanently embarrassed, so that's great. Anyway, certain things I've made seem to have calmed it down, um, niacinamide being one, uh, kukui oil seems to work very well for me as well. However, I wanted to create a moisturiser that attacked it in every way possible. So I did some research on ingredients that can help with rosacea and designed uh, a moisturiser containing a whole load of the best sounding ones and this is what I came up with. Also, before I get started, a quick note about claims. Um, the information about each ingredient is the manufacturer slash supplier ingredient claims and they're different from product claims. Suppliers are not bound by the same claims rules as we are as finished product manufacturers. So to make this product and claim it did all of the things that I'm going to suggest the ingredients do would not be allowed unless your product had undergone official testing with proven results. So right now, regardless of whether I see results or not, and regardless of what the ingredients claim to do, it is only classed as a cosmetic. Right, so that's all the boring stuff out of the way, let's get making it. And to start with, I'm going to add some vegetable glycerin to a beaker. Uh, vegetable glycerin is a humectant and it draws moisture to the skin. You can use another humectant of choice if you prefer, this is just the one that I like using. And I used it to disperse my thickener prior to adding it to the water. My thickener today is going to be Sologum AX. I really, really love this. Uh, it provides a silky glide to the finished product and a really nice gel night texture. Um, you do need a tiny bit more of it than if you were using Xanthan gum, um, but you can of course substitute it for Xanthan gum soft if you prefer. I'd just say use less of the Xanthan gum than I do of the, Zolo uh, the Sologum. Um, and you're just adding that to the vegetable glycerin and then mixing that around to create a slurry. This just avoids clumping. Although I must say, Sologum doesn't seem to clump too badly in water and is quite readily dissolved. Um, so this is just a general step I do, but with Sologum you don't necessarily have to do this first, at least in my experience. But anyway, Give that a really, really good stir into a slurry until it's fully dispersed. If you're adding colour, you can add a bit of mica to this stage as well. And this is what it looks like. 
in a separate beaker. I've got my water. I'm just doing this separately because we need to dissolve our niacinamide. Niacinamide is uh, also known as vitamin B3 and it's said to decrease redness, blotchiness and the red bumps caused by rosacea when used regularly. It can help to ease inflammation and decrease water loss. Um, however, it can be an irritant to some people. So if you are one of those people, just omit this and increase the water phase. Um, but it really readily dissolves in water, as you'll see here, really, really quickly. Um, so once that's dissolved, we can add it to our glycerin and solid gum mixture. So we can mix this up a little bit to start creating our gel and then we're going to add our aloe vera juice which is our last ingredient in the water phase and this soothes the skin uh, to help reduce redness and inflammation supposedly <laughs> these are the supplier claims that i'm chatting about when i explain each ingredient just so you have an idea of how and why i'm using them so mix that really well and you'll see it creates this beautiful silky gel um, and this is what will basically thicken our product and also add some humectant properties and then we get the benefits of the niacinamide and the aloe vera. So now we'll work on phase B which is our oil phase and I'm adding some <laughs> bakuchiol oil, I can't pronounce it. Um, it's known as a plant derived retinal alternative. Um, it's anti-aging, soothes inflamed and red skin has antimicrobial properties and can help prevent breakouts. The next thing I'm adding is kukui oil. I've had a lot of success with this with rosacea personally. Um, it's light and non-greasy. It's easily absorbed into the skin, soothes irritated dry skin and helps with breakouts from acne and rosacea. So adding some of that. My next ingredient is our emulsifier. I'm using Ecomulse, also known as Retamulse in the USA. It's a plant-derived all-in-one emulsifier that conditions the skin and it also provides a nice silky soft feeling to the cream. It's very, very nice when applied, which is why I use it. If you want to use a different emulsifier, you can, but you may need to recalculate amounts based on the oils um, and like I mentioned before the formula with percentages for this is available on my patreon link below. Next I'm adding flaxseed oil this contains vitamins A, B1, B2, B3, B5, B6 and E <laughs> an anti-inflammatory oil that reduces redness and irritation again um, and it's said to be good for reducing the appearance of rosacea which is why I'm using it it's also very very affordable then I'm adding an extra thickener and stabiliser, which is cetyl alcohol. Um, this also acts as an occlusive to prevent water loss. And my last ingredient for the oil phase is almond butter. It's rich in vitamins A and E. Again, not an anti-inflammatory, uh, sorry, again, it is an anti-inflammatory that can help to reduce redness and soothe conditions like acne and rosacea. It moisturises and helps to repair skin cells. And that's why we're adding that. Uh, my only uh, con for buying this is that it came in a bag and I cannot stand when butters and hard oils are sold in bags. It is just the most annoying thing to work with and there's always so much waste trying to get the last bits out of the bag. So if you're a supplier that sells things like this, please don't. <laughs> please find another way of doing it. Um, anyway, water phase weigh it, note down the weight including the beaker weight, put that in a water bath along with the oil phase and we'll now work on phase C which is our cool down phase and this is where we're going to put all our lovely extracts. So to this beaker you can see me using licorice root extract which helps to reduce inflammation of conditions like rosacea and can help to reduce the appearance of age spots, dark areas of hyperpigmentation and can have lightening properties reducing redness, packed full of antioxidants. We've also got horse chestnut oil, which I explain a little bit more about in the blog. 
green tea extract helps protect the skin from damage from free radicals and regular use can help reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Um, lily extract, again, more information on the blog on Patreon. All of these are said to very drastically help rosacea. So we shall see. <laughs> um, and then I added some vitamin E as I usually do, like we don't need any more antioxidants and some preservative eco. I get on quite well with preservative eco, but it can be a bit finicky to remain stable in your products. So do do your testing or use a preservative that you're more happy with. Um, preservative eco also does have a bit of an almond scent. So that's something to bear in mind. I've not added a fragrance because this is designed to go on my face and I want to keep it as uh, sort of nice as possible. Um, you can add one if you like. The overall scent when it's finished is just a little bit oily, I guess. Um, once you've melted down your oil phase and your water phase and oil phase are around the same temperature, you want to weigh your water phase again, replace any water lost to evaporation and then add your water phase to your oil phase like you see me doing here and then we're going to sheer mix it. Now, I always use a stick blender because I know home formulators are going to have easy access to this, but if you do have proper formulation equipment, uh, such as an overhead stirrer or homogenizer, do use the correct equipment because you will always get a better and more stable results with that. But for the sake of home formulating, a stick blender will be fine. Um, just bear in mind it may affect stability. So you've got a fairly thick cream here, but we need to let it cool down for a while uh, because we need to be, to be 40 degrees C to add our cool down ingredients. You should know this by now. Um, so we're just going to leave this for a little while and uh, come back to it when it's that temperature. If you stir it intermittently while it's cooling, then it just lets the heat disperse evenly around the product so that you get a more accurate temperature reading. At least that's what I think. Um, so keep doing that. I do love how thick this is and how it looks already. So I'm quite excited to see how this turns out. So we'll check it one last time. And a reading of about 40, that's fine. So we can add our cool down ingredients. Make sure you get every last bit out of the container. So just sort of scrape it with your spatula. And then you want to incorporate this by hand. Um, this stops any additional air getting whipped into the mixture. And when that's fully incorporated, we can move on to checking our pH. If you need to know how to check and adjust pH, I do have another video on that on my channel. That's linked below. Um, I don't want to be showing it in every single video because that'll get quite boring for those that have seen it many, many times. Um, Basically, all you do is pop a little bit of your cream or lotion or whatever you're making in a beaker. This is a pH meter specifically for taking the pH of creams. If you do not have this pH meter, you will need to dilute it first. And this has come out about pretty much spot on a five, um, which is absolutely fine. We're happy with that. Um, that's a good range for the niacinamide and all the other ingredients. So I'm happy. If you want to leave this in the beaker overnight to uh, reach its final viscosity before you jar up, that's absolutely fine. You can do that. I got impatient, so <laughs> I filled my jar for the video. Um, this will likely firm up a little bit overnight. Um, and then we're going to give it a little test and see how it feels on my skin. It will take some time for me to see if this does make any difference to my slight rosacea on my cheeks or not, um, but I will report back on Patreon and let my patrons know uh, how that's going. Um, it goes on my arm really nice. It seems a tiny bit greasy at first, but it does absorb very well and then feels very nice. Um, and here you can see the finished cream. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you do want the formula with all the percentages and the blog that goes with this, then you can now find those on my Patreon, along with lots of other formulas uh, that are exclusive to there. And you can also message me. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.